So I don't know about you, but for me, as soon as the stress hits, I go haywire. I can't sleep, I'm in a bad mood, I can't function, I can't do any of the work I said, and honestly, I can't really get anything done. But it wasn't until I stumbled upon this research study done in the Journal of Neuroscience that I finally figured out how to disable my stress trigger. Hey, what's up? This is Alex Hein over at ModernHealthMonk.com. So listen to this cool study done in the Journal of Neuroscience. They took two groups of mice. One group of mice was naturally aggressive and territorial. The other was softer, more tame, and docile. Now, these weaker mice were further divided into two groups. So again, remember, this is the territorial mice, the weaker mice. Before researchers conducted this experiment, they had weaker mice, and they either allowed them to exercise, playing in their wheel, running around, exploring, or they didn't get to exercise. Then the researchers actually took the aggressive territorial mice and put them in the same room as the weaker mice. So when the weaker mice were actually put in the box with these stronger mice, the aggressive mice, the territorial mice, for five minutes, they started cowering and submitting and going in the corner and not moving, and they showed high levels of stress and anxiety, which actually persisted after the experiment. Now, after these mice were put in with the aggressive territorial mice, they were put into a new maze to test their decision-making ability. So the researchers wanted to see how the mice would function after the stress response had been activated. And these weak mice that had been just totally haywired from stress, they actually were not doing anything. They were staying in the corner, they weren't going through the maze, they were freezing up or they were acting anxious, and they weren't actually making any decisions. So their actual decision-making ability was dramatically impacted by the stress and anxiety they had gone through previously with the aggressive mice. Now what's kind of crazy is that the mice, the weak mice, remember, that had the exercise time beforehand actually exuded stress-resistant behavior. So they went through the same trauma, essentially, but afterwards they were much more able to function. In other words, they were much more resilient to the stress despite being stressed out the exact same amount. Now in human beings, when we're stressed out long enough, it typically leads to either anxiety or to depression. And neither of those are very useful when you're trying to go about your busy life and you want to look and feel really good. Neither of those are going to serve you. But the question is really, and what science hasn't 100% figured out, is why some people are more resilient to stress than others are. And this brings in one piece of the puzzle. Now what the researchers later concluded was that the mice that exercised beforehand had proactively prevented stress or deactivated its response and made it not quite as severe versus the mice that did not do any exercise. So in humans, they found that just doing a 30-minute walk can already proactively, ahead of time, help deactivate the stress response, make you more resilient, make you more able to deal with stress, and be less affected by it in the long run. So here's your tiny habit for today. Especially if you're one of those people that can't just like go meditate in a corner if you're getting stressed out or you're a busy executive or maybe you're a CEO, regularly exercising, and I'm saying not just when you're stressed, like you can exercise when you're stressed. I've done that before, it helps some people, but what if it's three in the afternoon? Well, just by regularly exercising, as little as a 30 minute walk, will proactively not only make it harder for you to get stressed, but you can come down off the anxiety and off the stress faster, and it just buffers you. It makes you more resilient overall, so your body is more well adapted to deal with it. So some people use walking as their stress trigger. Maybe you have a fight with your spouse, and you decide to go out for a walk, and you come back a half hour later and you feel great. That's perfect. But my suggestion here is not only to do that, you can do that, but also this is reason number 356 to regularly incorporate exercise, even if it's as simple as walking. So that's kind of just a cool study, you know, some, uh, some food for thought. If you're on YouTube, go on over to modernhealthmonk.com. I've got a real food habits weight loss guide for you there, the exact five habits you need to know. Make sure you click the subscribe button, a little monk dude there, and leave a comment below. Like when you know, when everything hits the fan, what do you do to counteract the stress? Tell me below. Make sure you leave a comment, subscribe over there, go on over to Modern Health Monk, and I'll see you next time.